On this very solemn note, I appreciate everyone who, in this our trying moment, have commiserated with us over the demise of the late Chief Army staff and our gallant officers and men in the last few days. We are here for a special summit on national security. National security seeks to guarantee the safety and well-being of the state and its citizens. The Armed Forces of Nigeria and other security agencies are tools of policy implementation on issues of national security. They, of course, are in the front line in terms of policy implementation, but as tools. Policies that are formulated are what they implement in the, in the area of defense and security. And so this is the reason for which I find our invitation to be very expedient. I'd like to thank the speaker and members of the House of Reps who have pulled this summit together and seen us fit or appropriate to be invited as part of those to talk. I also believe and with very solemn due difference that even though that we've been talking for such a long time, I also believe that talk cannot be enough. Yes, it is good for us to talk and do what we have spoken about. It is by talking that the actions that have been taken are reviewed. And then what has been left undone cannot be pointed out. I just thought I should put that in context. I know and I give due reverence to our revered traditional rulers who have made that uh, reference. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. Peace is very expensive. Very expensive. But insecurity is more expensive than peace. Insecurity in various dimensions is more expensive. And if perhaps one will look at the component costs of peace, love for country, which of course has made our traditional rulers to extend their stay in Abuja to be able to be part of this discussion. And of course, everyone that is here having to give up other engagements to be here. It is because of love for country, which, of course, some have termed to be patriotism. Sacrifices of various forms, including paying the supreme price, is also a cost component to the peace. And this, of course, is what the death of Ibrahim, Atahiru, Lieutenant General, and other generals and personnel of the armed forces in recent time exemplifies. We equally have our men, officers and men in the front lines in various theaters of operation who have paid this price. It's all part and parcel of the cost for peace. And so putting together these various components, you find that my assertion to the fact that cost is very, peace is very expensive comes very handy. Inconveniences that we find when security agencies implement certain policies and guidelines. Sometimes it's not convenient for the populace, it's not convenient for the citizens. These inconveniences, of course, are part and parcel of the cost for peace. The intention of the police and other security agencies to 
inconvenience in parentheses, the populace is to the greater good of the citizens. The moral support that you give to the armed forces and security agencies is also part and parcel of this cost component for peace. And more importantly, I'd like to indicate that every one of us as Nigerians, we have a part to play in contributing to this cost for peace. This is why I'd like to thank every Nigerian using this medium to thank every Nigerian for the support they've given to the leadership of the armed forces and security agencies and ensuring that as they undertake their responsibilities, their task of defending and providing the ambience for socioeconomic activities to thrive in the country and for everyone to live in peace and harmony. The support that you've been providing is, in, is invaluable. We can only ask that you give us more of that support and to also know that the leadership of the armed forces and the security agencies are mindful of the concerns that are being shown or that are being expressed across the country and we promise that in line with the directive of the Commander-in-Chief that we will take every measure necessary to bring peace to our fatherland. I would also like to use this opportunity to thank the National Assembly leadership and of course all its members being representatives of the people for the support they've given to the armed forces and security agencies on the course of their responsibility. We remain loyal to Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, and to the Constitution, and I think it's necessary to also re-emphasize that we will defend the constitutional order at all times. Once again, as we deliberate um, during the course of this uh, special um, summit on national security, I encourage everyone to please be forthcoming and to converse ideas, solutions that will enable the various organs, not just of government, of course, every sector of, every sector of, the, of the economy to undertake the actions that they require to, to, to undertake. Once again, thank you. And